I thought this was kind of interesting. I've been reading this book, A Five Hour Work Week, by Stefan Arstel. And at the end of his book, talks about dropping him a line if you're trying this. So I thought, what the heck, I'll email him. So I emailed him yesterday. And lo and behold, he sent me a message back saying, good luck, Shane. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I've never done that before where I've actually reached out to an author and he he's messaged me back. So that was, uh, I like that. I thought that was kind of neat. So I just told him I'd give him an update and let him know how things are going. Because again, my goal is to be efficient. That's the name of the game. I'm not trying to cut corners and all this kind of stuff. I just want to not double my time by wasting energy and time and all this kind of stuff. So I try to plan out my day the day before, have an idea of which calls I'm going to do and all that kind of stuff. And I pretty much stick to a schedule every single week. It just depends on what's on sale and all that kind of stuff. What I find is I probably shave about I would say a good 30 to 40 minutes by starting earlier. If I start at 7 or leave the house at 7, whatever you want, um, because there's people and traffic and all this kind of stuff, it just adds to your time, it adds to your day. And I don't know if the lights are changed after a certain time because they just seem like they take forever. That's one thing I noticed. So if you can start earlier, then you can avoid people and just get your job done a lot quicker. There's no traffic, none of that kind of stuff. You don't have to wait for managers or anything. You just do your thing. If you can minimize the bathroom breaks, and obviously everybody needs to go to the bathroom, but if you drink too much coffee, like normally I do, you can end up going to the bathroom like every 45 minutes. So... I wanted to cut that back. So right there, bathroom breaks, <clears throat> starting work a little bit earlier, that's about an hour. Just just doing that alone. And then if you realize that you're not spending time in lineups buying coffee or getting a meal or any of that stuff, it's probably another half an hour. So you're already saving an hour and a half. So if you add that to your five hour, that's six and a half hours. Then what happens is people start winding down about three o'clock in the afternoon. They're like, yeah, I can't start a huge project because if I start this, I won't finish it. Maybe I'll just, I'll get up real early and I'll start it tomorrow, which never happens. So, so that is pretty much a time waster from three o'clock to five o'clock. Um, in the corporate world anyway, that's when you tend to waste the most amount of time as I get it it's hard to start a new project you know it's 3 30 4 o'clock and uh it's crazy to have a meeting at the end of the day because people are looking at their watch going man if I leave after five I'm going to be stuck in traffic which happened a lot in downtown Calgary if you're leaving work at three o'clock in the afternoon Good luck getting out of downtown because after 3 o'clock, between 3 and 6 o'clock, it was just mayhem down there. I know because I worked there for a little while. I, I would end up taking the train because it was a lot easier to get on the train, get out from downtown. Uh, I used to be uh, recruiting for engineers way back when. And I was right downtown, right in the heart of everything. Now I live in a small town just outside of Calgary. I deliver potato chips. I'm just trying to be a little bit more efficient. So maybe I can do a little bit more golfing this summer. Maybe I can do some more projects during the week. What I find, uh, if you're finished before 12, you can do a lot more errands in the afternoon. Maybe a little bit of yard work, that kind of stuff. So that when the weekend comes, because you're all caught up in your yard work and all your errands, maybe groceries here and there and all this kind of stuff, you can actually enjoy the weekend now because your yard work's all done and you don't have to go shopping or any of that stuff. You can just hang out, maybe go for a hike, bike ride, whatever it is. 
So that's kind of cool. So I'm really hoping that I can sustain this, especially for the summer. Because like I mentioned in another video, I only get two weeks off per year. We are taking off at the end of June, I believe it is, for a week. So that would be nice. We're going to Saskatchewan for a week. So that would be fun. So yeah, and I got to get to work on this uh, uh, pergola that I have. So I got to build that thing. Uh, maybe I'll just show you this deck here. Hopefully, how long is this video? Ah, it's only five minutes, so let's just go outside. Here's my here's my yard. So give me a snapshot here. So this is my backyard. There's our patio furniture. Um, I pushed it to the end of this deck because right here, I'm gonna, this is where I'm going to build a pergola. And it's very similar to the one that you see over there. Except ours has a little arch in it. So I'll probably build that maybe over the next couple of days. It's pretty cold right now. And as you can see, there's shade. Right now it's in the afternoon. And this, this deck doesn't really get the sun until about June or July. That's when it gets really hot out here. As you can see, uh, there's still ground still frozen. And really, in probably in like a month, this grass is going to be luscious green. I built this garden last year. Ripped out all the grass by hand. That was kind of silly. I just used a knife and used my bare hands, ripped it all out. So yeah, so that's the plan is to uh, get this yard all in ship shape. And that's part of my goal is shrinking down my hours so I can work five hours solid and then come home, do some yard work and that kind of stuff. Maybe go golfing and uh, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. And then obviously I got to give Stefan an up update as to what's going on. Anyways, see you in another video.